Welcome back to Gun City. I'm Fergan. Today we've got Mike McElraith from Titari Pariki, the Firearms Authority, and the registry is coming up on the 24th of June. And so we've got a whole lot of questions for Mike uh, to be able to shed light on this, questions that you might be asking yourself. Uh, oh. Great to be here, Ferg. Thanks for hosting me here in Christchurch at, uh, at your shop. And um, yeah, happy to have a conversation about any aspect of the registry or uh, anything firearms. So what is the Firearms Safety Authority? Uh, so look, for, uh, Encapsulator says for many decades, police have been responsible for the administration regulation of the Arms Act. Yep. Um, after the attacks in Christchurch in 2019, there was a whole lot of learnings out of the Royal Commission of Inquiry and other stuff police were doing. Um, that resulted in new funding uh, from government in the yep. May 22 budget, uh, which enabled police to stand up a branded business unit um, as a dedicated regulator for all things around uh, firearms regulatory requirements. So very briefly, while we're still part of police, we're actually quite separate. We, we Tatadi Pariki, the Firearms Safety Authority, we deal with all the regulatory things, licensing, permitting, um, safety, all that sort of stuff. And over here, the main police worries about constabulary activities such as chasing criminals with guns and stuff like uh, that. There's a small overlap at times with information sharing, yep. but predominantly we do all the regulatory stuff um, and that's our mandate and funding ability. Look, there's been a lot of conversation Absolutely. about the registry. There's a lot of, there's a lot of history here it will be talked yep. about. Uh, from your point of view, why is the registry a good idea? The greatest thing about the registry from an individual license holder point of view, Ferg, is yep. that um, when you operate in the registry, the person you're dealing with, you know has got a firearms license, yep. and you know the firearm they've got is a legal firearm. Yes. That, that uh, encapsulated, that's it. So whether it's an individual to individual sale, mm. or um, a loan situation, or you know buying, whatever it might be through the dealer, um, you, using the registry gives everybody that surety that you're dealing with the right people. Uh, how long does it take to sign up online, and is it easy? Yeah, look, really easy. Um, you, you, you go in, you do the real me thing, you go through, uh, full name, address, um, put in relevant details, and um, then you start registering your firearms. You know, many people might have three, five, or eight firearms. Mm. Uh, should be a relatively uh, quick process. If they hit, they hit any issues, ring the 0800 number Monday to Friday. Yeah. Um, that number will be released on the 24th of June, yeah. and um, chat to uh, chat to the team. Now, registry goes live on the 24th of June. Uh, what happens on the 24th of June? You know, if I'm a normal firearms license yep. holder, what, what happens? So look, um, there's quite a bit to it. I really encourage um, yourself and, and your listeners to go and have a look at our website. Mm. So if you Google um, Firearm Safety Authority, um, that'll take you to Tatari Pariki site. In there, there's a registry tab. Have a look at that, it's got all, all, all the detail. But um, some of the key, key, key detail looks like this. Um, in the next five years, uh, yep. all license holders in New Zealand have to register their firearms. So in my case, my 222s. Sure. During that period, there's things called activating circumstances. An activating circumstance says that if during that five uh, five years one of these things happen, you've you've then got to go and register your firearms. So the activating circumstances, things like um, apply for a license, apply to import something, um, uh, change your address, uh, those those sorts of uh, those sorts of things. Yeah. And in that case, so if I um, say in July this year, um, apply for a new license, Tatari Pariki would uh, touch base with me and say, thanks, got your application. By the way, you've now got 30 days to uh, register whatever firearms you've got. In my case, it would be two 22s. Sure. So the easiest uh, pathway, there's two pathways, but the easiest pathway for me to go and do that is to go online and do yep. the online registration process. The alternative pathway, if I didn't have internet access or preferred not to, yes. there's an 0800 number with a registry team there that's Monday to Friday that can help um, over the phone. But again, we prefer people to um, come online. Sure. The online process looks a little bit like this, is that um, I would go in through Realme, um, got an account or I can create one, it doesn't need to be verified at this point through the RealMe thing. Um, and uh, then there's a two-factor authentication, which means I put in my phone number, it sure. pings back with a unique code, yep. I put it in. I would then upload my 222s. Um, one of the big things we've heard from the community um, about the registry is privacy and data security. So if I can mm. quickly touch on that and then come back to the process. Yep, go yep. for it. Yep, so um, look, we, f we fully understand that um, we have uh, built the technology to the same standard as expected across all government systems, which hold mm. a whole lot of uh, information. So we've, we've had all the relevant um, testing done. Part of the testing is that um, you bring in a, um, independent firms who's, who are specialise in what they call penetration testing, yep. which is they effectively they try to hack your system sure. during the development. And so we've had that done and we've met all the required standards. So really excited about so that. So they haven't been able to get, they get past been able the to barriers. Get yep, 
Yep, so it's metal of standards. There's a lot of yeah. government standards and they're a very high level, as sure. you can appreciate. But in addition to that, not just the data security, is that all of our people are, are vetted as well. Mm. And that we have systems and processes in place around you know, any any information held by police or Tatari Pariki, you're only allowed to access it for a genuine and work-related purpose. You can't yeah. just go randomly wandering through the system. Yeah. And so we've got all those parameters in place. And also we do um, assurance test, uh, tests and quality assurance uh, throughout the year as well, which basically says at certain times, we'll go in and check you know, Mike to see what he's looked at and why he's looked at it and these sorts of things to make sure it's right and appropriate work sure. related. I mean, actually, I don't get to look at the registry. Um, I don't need to for my job. In, in relation to the security, Ferg, after I've gone through real me and I've, I've, I've logged in and uh, put in my 222s, sure. um, People need to think of the security a bit like your online banking um, level of security. Okay. Um, that, you know, you get access to your account. But in, all, in context of the registry, for me to go back in and have a look at the 222s that I've now recorded in the registry, mm. I'll first have to go through a verification process. Mm. And the reason is, is that we've heard from everybody how important privacy and data security is. So what I'm going to have to do is, even I will have to go to the police station with either my passport, driver's license or firearms license, get my identity verified and yes. be given a unique identifier. And I'll take that unique identifier, come back in, it'll be a code of some sort. I'll come back in, I'll put it back in uh, to, I'll log back in as I had previously. Mm. I'll then um, go back in and load it and then I'll be able to see my 222s. So it's a two-stage process. First I go in, I record them. Yep. Uh, and then once I'm verified, I then go in and um, uh, have a look at them. One of the great things is, is that once, say, you and I as individual licence holders have, have done that process, and let's say, you know, you want to borrow, borrow, um, buy my Ruger 1022, mm. um, I can go into the registry, I can select that Ruger 1022, and I can grab your licence number only, I can then input it saying, I want to give it to this person, Sure. and I can push it to you. So I think I heard you say before, you can sign up for Realme on the spot and it doesn't slow you down. Correct. You can You can sign up and you can go straight in with, yep. with your newly formed ID, and, and sign up on the registry. So that's a portal. Yes. Uh, the government standard of what it needs to be yes. around all the techie stuff. Yeah. Uh, and you go in there and what they call a non-verified account. Uh, we get the two-factor authentication. Then because you come yes. to the police station, from a Tatari Puriki registry point of view, you're yes. verified, irrespective yes. of what happens over here in the real me, yeah. uh, real me space. Yeah. But again, it's because of what we've heard and we want to achieve around personal and data security to, to have that extra, you yes. know, it's a bugger. That, that, but it's a once-only activity. And so I sign up, I enter my firearms, and then if I want to access it again, I do need to go into a police station. Yep. That, so there is like yep. a physical second, third factor authentication, Absolutely. I suppose you call it. And so if I've signed in and then I want to sell a firearm, I can't just sign in and then sell a firearm. I've got to sign in, go to the police station, yep. be authenticated physically, and then I can log back in and do it. Does that, yep. Is that how yep. it is? Absolutely. And look, I appreciate some people are going to have to travel a bit of a distance to a police station to do that. Yes but it's a once in a time activity. If, if I first put in my 222s, um, I could wait six or 12 months before I go in to get the other factor authentication. If I want to sell my 22, um, I would ring up the 0800 number on Monday to Friday and I can do it over the phone while I'm waiting to be verified. Yeah, no, that's... Um, now the that's online right. capability of pushing the um, 22 to you, because your registry's been delivered in, in iterative technology chunks, um, that will be coming in the 6, 12, 18, 24 month mark because there's a whole lot of different capability right. we have to do. But what I did was describe... So there are going to be further updates. There's going to be further updates. And upgrades. And which will give us give us the ability to do that transfer uh, like I described. Okay, well, that's um, that's cool. Sorry, just a, just a couple of questions. Unless you wanted to finish off something on that. Uh, just quickly about activating circumstances. Yes. Um, yeah, that was what I was going to ask you next. Ammunition purchasing mm. uh, is an activating circumstance from the 24th of June, 2025. Yeah. So between now That's and- That's next year. The year after. 2025. This is the problem. We're, we're living in the future. Two years. Two years. Got yeah. that right. No, well, no, no. So two, two, two years from the end of this month is yes. when if you haven't otherwise had an activating circumstance and you buy ammo, that's an activating circumstance yes. type thing. So Now, in terms of other activating circumstances, if I lend you a firearm, yep. uh, do, I need to, do you need to register my firearm? So there's, there's a whole lot around that. Let's uh, we'll start with a scenario where we've both got um, registered firearms. Sure. In that scenario, um, I can rock up, um, have made arrangements with you. Hey Ferg, yeah. can I borrow your uh, 12 gauge? Um, Penale. There you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna like it. Trust me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
So that'd be a great gun. But you'll, you, you satisfy yourself that I'm a, a license holder. Correct. And I'll show you my card. You'll yes. put me into the license checker maybe. Yes. And ideally, actually. Yeah. Um, and then um, I can borrow that firearm from you for up to 30 days and you yeah. don't need to update the registry. Okay. However, if I was borrowing it from you for more than 30 days, you must update the registry. And you can go and do that online or over the I-800 number say, this is the license holder I've given it to. Yeah. Of course, you may choose to to uh, push it to me in a lesser time frame. Mm. So I'm just borrowing for the weekend. In case it does go longer. Yep, you can do that. There's no problem with that, but you're not obliged to under regulations unless it's more than 30 days yeah. uh, type thing. Sure um, thing. Obviously, they all need serial numbers. They're called markings in the Regulations and Act. Yes. We're putting out a guiding, guidance document in the next few weeks because by chance, I've got a... Um, a 1930 single shot 22 my grandfather taught me on, actually just down the road here when I was growing up, and um, uh, it doesn't have a serial number. So we've actually gone and put a serial number on it. We're providing guidance around there. So if someone hasn't got a serial number on it or they've got a serial number in Arabic or something like that, yeah. it needs needs to be uh, clear. We don't, um, you know, it needs to be in English and normal number characters, yeah. and we'll provide you how you pick your own serial number and make that happen. What happens if I enter my firearm incorrectly? And only yep. and only think about it later. Later, I've got to go back in and yep. do it. I mean, then no I've problem. got to I've got to go and get that police authentication right uh, before I go back in. No, no, bring the eight hundred number. You just ring the and just say, number. hey, look, I, I made the zero is an O or the O is a zero or whatever it might be. I've and made a bit of an error out. because at some point we're going to go. And we'll, we'll have a look at the firearm or someone else will look at the firearm and it'll be verified sure. you know, about the particular firearm. Yep. So look, you know, big fingers, whatever, we'll we'll make it work. My friend and I, I'm selling a firearm to him. It's a new system. Let's say it goes down. What do I do if it goes down and, you know, I'm worried about 30 days lapsing, you know, some kind of failure within yep. the system? How does that work? 0800 number, we're there to help. Okay, well, is, that, is it 0800, we're there to help? No, not quite, but I'll be, <laughs> right. it's 0800 right. something or other. Right. You'll get lots of questions all the time. Yep. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you feel like you need to speak to? Something to clear up, maybe? Yeah, no, look, I think we've probably covered it pretty well. The privacy security you know, is four of mine for us, hence... Mm. Those processes that we described, you know, the real me or the I-800 with the authentication, going to the police station, getting verified and then operating like your bank account, mm. recognising we're delivering the registry and iterative technology uh, chunks. Yep. Um, and indeed, As in rolling it out progressively. Yeah, because we need to get it right because, you know, it's a brand, brand, new, uh, brand new build. But look, I think people will find once they're in there, it'll be um, once you've registered, um, just carry on doing what you do. Sure. You'll probably notice no difference. It's not like your bank account when you're in there once a week or twice a week or whatever. Mm. I suspect you'll be in there a whole lot less, um, you know, unless you're actually in business or, or something like that. Sure. Um, it is a change for New Zealand. It's a change for all of us, myself um, and you as license holders yeah. as well. Um, but at least uh, remembering that there is a place for firearms in New Zealand for the right people. And those people who err, we'll deal with them off to a side. Uh, it's a very small number. Um, but we want everybody else to be really, really successful. And, you know, hopefully the recent changes around the licensing has demonstrated that and all, all these things. So exciting yeah. opportunities for um, sport business and recreation going forward, I think, Ferg. Great. Now, if someone wanted to go online and look at the registry details, find the 0800 yep. number, uh, where would they go? So Google uh, Firearm Safety Authority. Yep. That'll bring up to Tari Puruki, Firearm Safety Authority site. Go into the registry tab and have a look at that stuff. And maybe we can come together again in a few months' time, Ferg, and have a bit of a conversation about how everybody's finding it. See and how it we went. Yeah. See if any smoke came out of the top of the yeah. computer when, when the 24th of June came around. Absolutely. Mike, thanks so much for being on. All right. Thanks, Ferg. Cheers. Oh, thanks, Take Luke. care.